Hi, I'm Angela Wolf, fashion designer and online instructor. And in this season, we're sewing jackets. A cute trench coat, something very simple, even a basic sewer will get the, the hang of this one. And then I even add some touches for something a little more elaborate. All right, so what, to get started, I'm using a trench coat pattern that has three pieces to the, the jacket body. Very easy, it has a back piece, a front, a side front, and the important part is it has a two-piece sleeve. It always just fits better. So first you need to pick your pattern, regardless if it's one of these or something that you have in your stash, pull it out and pick some fabric. There are a lot of options. You could use a denim, cotton, this is a wool blend, a little bit of cashmere in there for those of you that like a little bit of luxury. You could do a fun evening wear with a great lining on this one. And how about this? This is just a fun fabric, a little furry feel. Any of these would be great for this jacket. Lining, you can either line the jacket or you can do something fun. I have this jacket here. This is what I did to the trench coat where I just finished the seams with silk bias, which is how we're gonna sew this jacket. So for lining, you can pick something. This is just a polyester, it's a little thicker if you need the jacket for warmth. This is what you call ambiance, which is a rayon has a nice shine to it. You want it to be slippery, so if you're gonna use it in the sleeves, which we'll do as well, sometimes you put your jacket on, you can't get your arms in the sleeves, this will help. And then here's one that has a little bit thicker, and this is for warmth. Here is my favorite. The inside of my jackets usually look more fabulous than the outside. These are all silk, and then this one is cotton. And you'll see, this is the one I used inside that jacket there. So to get started, you wanna choose your pattern, pick your size, it's really important to sew up a muslin. So this fabric here, I've chosen because it's very similar in weight to this jacket over here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this out. First, I'm gonna cut two, muslin, two muslins, one without sleeves and then one with sleeves. And I'm gonna go do that and I'll meet you back here in a second. Let's check out the fit. All right, so I've taken the time, cut out my pattern, and I cut these out of just inexpensive fabric. This is a different style, a little longer. This is the same jacket that you see over here. So a couple things when you're testing the fit. First of all, when you sew together your muslin, you use a 5.0 stitch, it's a basting stitch. It's easy to rip out, so this is just to test to make sure a couple things are working right. So usually first, I leave the sleeves off. The reason being is when you test the fit of the jacket, you wanna see how far over is the shoulder going? Does this need, is it way out here? Do you need to cut it back? Or is it too far back? That's really, your shoulder will probably determine the fit of the jacket more than anything else. Even more than the bust area, I say. Start at the top and work down. So if you were gonna mark this, let's just say you needed to bring your shoulder in. You can just take your pen and say, oh, my shoulder needs to go here and then just Mark your lines all the way down. And usually I do this on customers, so this is a mannequin today. And you just cut that off and save that piece so you can add that to your pattern. Another area you, you want to check is this through here. I'm just gonna make a really bad boo-boo here so you can see an example. Let's just say that your jacket is like this. First of all, you don't want gapping right here. This can be adjusted in your princess seam, which is why it's always a good idea to find a jacket with a princess seam. There's more areas for you to do a little better fitting. But also, if this is too wide here, or if this is too low, or if it's too far to the back, you get the idea? Your sleeve should be attached to your sleeve to your arm. You don't want your sleeve attached way over here or too low or too far back. You could actually have a very loose fitting jacket and if you don't put the sleeve on in the right place, you'll have a very, like this, you can't move. Lack of movement, would that be what you call it? So that's really important. So check the fit there, check the front. If it's gapping like this, you're gonna need to give yourself more room in different areas or change the size of the pattern. Another thing you can do is you can check the collar now, when I do a muslin, I don't cut the pockets, I don't cut the belt, I don't cut all the pieces, just the main parts for the fit, which is what I have here. The last thing you'll do once you have a great fit is you'll sew your sleeve together, and I usually just put this on. I'll put it on myself, but I'm gonna use a dress form right now. And you wanna make sure that the sleeve fits 
to your angle of your arm. So even though the center notch might be here, on you, your body might be different. Your center notch might need to move back a little bit. So have a little flexibility with that sleeve. So once you have the fit down, you're gonna take your muslin, you can actually use that as your pattern, or you can trace it back to your pattern and save it for later. The next step is going to be to prep all of your pieces. So here I have fusible interfacing. So this is a longer jacket than the blue one here, but it's all the same process. Like I mentioned, whatever jacket you're using, all of these tips will help. So this is the side front. You put four inches of fusible interfacing at the bottom. Now this is a really lightweight interfacing. If you're using something heavier, like an Armo weft or something like that, you would wanna not have this in the seam allowances. But for time's sake, I just covered it all up and I haven't had any problems with it being too thick. This is a wool fabric. The other area is up here under the arm. And in the pattern directions, this tells you all of that. So you don't have to remember it, but if you're adapting it to something that maybe you need to work on. Now this is for a lined jacket. This part needs to be stabilized in the top back and later we'll be sewing a back pleat. So that's just some ideas for you. Now what about this jacket over here? Let's just take a quick look here. This you can see is not lined. So the one thing with this is that I want to make sure that the seams look nice, that they're finished. So similar to this jacket here, which is just a little shorter, I thought it'd be easier for you to see. All of the seams are finished with bias trim, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. It's a lot of fun, it takes a little bit of time, but you have to plan where are you gonna put the bias strips. So for this jacket, you can see none of the interfacing is showing, like you see on here. So it's in here, but it's hidden. And that's what we're gonna strategically do through this process. So you can see my center back seam, I have the seams individually wrapped with bias. This is a side back seam where I actually sewed the seams together and then wrapped it in bias. So you have to plan how is your jacket going to work. So for this, this particular jacket, I only have a princess seam a si and two side seams, no back seam. You can see the back on this. It's just a fun, loose look. So what I'm gonna do is wrap bias around both side seams and then I'm going to wrap bias after I sew the front seam. So let me just show you how easy this is if you've never cut bias before. Bias is a 45 degree angle on your fabric. So if your salvage is here and salvage is here, you have to find your straight grain and you'll fold this up 45 degrees. A real easy way to find this is once you know that your cross grain is here, just fold your fabric kind of like a triangle. And if you were cutting a lot of this like I did, you can see I have strips and strips and strips of everything, of colorful fabric. I'm using pink with contrast threads so you'll be able to see. But you could also fold this in half. This is still the bias. You could just keep cutting rows and rows. So I'm just going to lay this out so you can see it. So there's my triangle. So I'm gonna grab just a quilter's ruler and I also have a sample of what I'm finishing here so you can get a little bit closer idea. These are pattern pieces for the jacket where it's unlined, but I just finished the edges with bias. All right, so here's my quilter's ruler. I cut my strips one inch wide for finishing the seams. So this is on a fold. If I cut this one inch, it's gonna be two inches. <laughs> Do the math. And I'm gonna keep that though, because I'm gonna use that for the hem, which you'll see later on. So there's one, and now I'm going to move this over one inch from that cutting line. And what I usually do is just go through and cut a whole bunch of just of strips. Let's pull these off. I'm just gonna make this short. I will go through and cut a whole bunch of these, depending on how long your jacket is. It's a long one short, you're gonna need this to finish the entire seam. It's better to have one long piece instead of having to piece these together. So what about sewing these? You could go and you could press this in half and then fold it as a double fold, but one inch is really tiny. Of course, you could buy pre-bought double folded bias, but I'm gonna show you a quick trip for sewing. Quick tip for sewing. So here is, I cut this on a triangle. I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. So here's this foot. It's a, it's a bias binding foot. It will actually, you slide the fabric through here, you're binding through here, your fabric through here, and it sews it all in one step. I'm telling you, this is so much fun. I would have done 10 jackets if I had time. So just attach that. Now the one thing, I'm actually gonna take that back out so you can see. I have this cut on an angle. You just glide this through this area here. And if you need to use a pin, 
do that. If you're using a silk or a satin, it gets a little tricky at the beginning. So you wanna pull out enough that you can get it underneath the foot, the feed dogs, to get started. So go ahead and put this on the machine. All right, there we go. Just slide it out a little bit. And the only other thing you need to do is change your needle position. Depending on where the bias is falling, yours might be different than mine, but I'm gonna move my needle just to the left, two notches. So I'm at a 2.5 width on my machine. Yours might be different though, so you have to test it. And this is basically all that happens. You have this, and then you have your fabric, and you slide your fabric right into this section right here. I'm gonna try to keep my hand out of the way so you can see. I'm just gonna do a few stitches to make sure it's capturing the bias, and then you slide your fabric into this area and your bias up here. So this is the tricky part. You have to hold your fabric, pushing it to the left a little bit, and you have to make sure that this is hitting the edge. Otherwise, you'll miss. Just stitch a little bit. Looks like it's capturing. And this is really how easy this is. You could use a stitch length of 2.5, 3.0, whatever you feel comfortable with, with the thickness of your fabric. So let's just take a look. That looks great on this side and on this side, all in one easy step. Now, what happens if you miss? I'm gonna just make a little mistake here and show you. It's very easy. Again, this is a purposeful mistake. <laughs> I'm just gonna show you something. If you go through and you see some, any of these edges, well, I'm trying to make a mistake, I can't even do that, but let's just say some of this is sticking out and you've already finished your whole piece. You don't have to rip the whole thing out. Just rip out the little piece that you missed if for some reason the fabric shift it a little bit, just rip out that little piece and you can just use your fingernails, tuck it under, give it a pressing and you're good to go. So this is how simple it is. So you're gonna do this to both side seams cause those will be pressed open. And then if you have a center back seam, do those individually. You won't do the princess seams until you actually sew the seam together and then you'll do both of the pieces in one. So go ahead, finish your edges, get your fabric ready and we're gonna keep sewing on this jacket. <laughs>